All right, what's going on guys? Okay, so today I'm gonna introduce you finally to the GMC. So um, this is a 1984 GMC C1500. Uh, this would be the uh, High Sierra, or I'm sorry, Sierra Classic Edition. Um, so I've had this truck for quite a while. Now, um, as you can see, it's not even kind of stock. So uh, let me show you a little bit about what's underneath the hood, what kind of makes this thing so cool um, overall. So this started out life as a 305 automatic. Um, it is uh, very clearly not that anymore. So this is an LM753. Um, it's got a 218, 227 Summit racing cam uh, in it. So that'd be probably like a stage two or something. I don't know. I don't know how they call it, but um, I've touched virtually every single part on this truck. Um, I have CPP front coilovers. I have a QA1 rear coilover kit. Um, I've got a. I've done the whole cooling system. I redid the brake system. So this is actually the Chevy Tahoe upgrade. So you grab like an 01 Tahoe, and then this is like a 01 uh, Chevy Blazer reservoir. So it bolts right on run a couple of adapters. Um, I'm running to a line lock that I have wired and plumbed, but not fully hooked up yet. So um, that kind of gets rid of the really mushy feel of the pedal on these trucks, which these trucks are just hideously known for. Um, so I do have vintage air on this truck. Unfortunately, it did leak out somehow this week. Um, running speed engineering headers. Um, pretty much a, a, lot of, a lot of the other stuff is, Kind of your run-of-the-mill stuff. I mean, it's, it's a factory intake. Um, this is just a generic uh, generic intake that I put together. 140 amp, uh, 140 amp alternator. Um, it does run just like a stock uh, power steering pump. The cool thing about the 80, I believe it's 81 or 82 and up trucks, is they use the metric fittings directly on the power steering hoses. So you're able to just buy new hoses for like an 84 and they work perfectly. So um, some other fun stuff is I did replace the steering shaft with like one out of a 95 or 96 Cherokee, uh, Jeep Cherokee XJ. So it gets rid of the rag joint, which helps really, really stiffen up the steering on these trucks. So this truck actually just really handles awesome um, with a lot of the things. So um, I do have a quick release steering wheel, um, not for what you think. It's just a lot easier to get in and out of the cab. Uh, these are Summit Racing seats um, with a pro car bracket. You're not going to be able to see that from this angle, but right here, um, this is going to be a pro car bracket. And then these are actually adapters that Summit Racing actually sells to run their seats on the pro car bracket. Um, pretty cool. Retro belt, five point harnesses, um, as well as I did build this custom center console. It's a little taller than I expected, so I actually had to extend my shifter, um, which I'll get to in a minute. But it's kind of cool, has a little bit of storage. Um, I've got two 10 inch subs in here, as well as some four by sixes. And then I put some six and a halfs in the door, as well as I do have the factory four by tens in the rear as well. So this truck actually has a great sound system um, for what it is. Um, this is running the Holly Terminator X Max system. Um, previously, I was running a 4L60 in this truck. That blew up on the way to Hot Rod Power Tour 2022, unfortunately. Um, and I ended up biting the bullet and going right to a T56, which has been awesome, uh, with the exception of the clutch pedal. So I have had nothing but issues with this clutch. And I don't know if it's me, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's the vendors that we chose to go with. It, it's kind of a mixed bag, unfortunately. Um, I went with American Powertrain. Um, they've been pretty helpful. Um, I've ran into a couple of issues with them though. Um, one of them being that when I bought everything for my truck, um, when I was ordering it, I said, you know what, I'm going to order a better clutch. I don't plan on keeping this thing at, say, the 320-ish horsepower or so um, that this thing should be making um, totally stock. I, I, I wanted to go up a little bit in that. So I reached out to the sales guy I'd been working with. He said, not a problem. We'll upgrade it. It'll be 20 bucks. And I was like, that seems really cheap. And he said, nope, that's what they run. So I said, okay, not a problem. So fast forward, we're at Tail of the Dragon. We're having a great time, really hammering through the gears of the truck. Truck's, truck's running and driving awesome. Um, and then I start to slip the clutch and I don't know if it got too hot or what it was, 
but the clutch started to slip. So ended up in Georgia with a slipping clutch on the way to Hot Rod Power Tour 2023, um, which was just a super unfortunate situation to be in. Um, ended up finding a shop that was able to help me out, got the clutch swapped out. Uh, we went with, this time we went with a centerline clutch um, and a new billet flywheel, even though I already had one, I probably could have had it resurfaced, but just with the time that we had available to us, there was not time to have that done. So we went with all new stuff. Um, come to find out, we were running a standard duty pressure plate, not the upgraded pressure plate that I had asked for. So super disappointing from my perspective. I mean, at this point, it ended up because I was in a rush. Um, I was really worried I was gonna get kicked out of my hotel for trying to do the clutch in the parking lot. So I paid a shop. I paid a shop like 1700 bucks to do this. And, and to be honest, it, it hasn't been right. Um, the, there was a couple issues with the throw out bearing, which is really quite frustrating because the Hydromax throw out bearing that American Powertrain uses is very problem prone, unfortunately. They're very difficult to bleed um, just all the way around. You have, to, you have to really work on them quite a bit to get them absolutely perfect. And that's kind of the issue that I'm running into now um, when I got the truck back from the shop, it really had almost no clutch at all as far as pedal goes. Um, went to go start working on it. Immediately, I break the uh, master cylinder, which is also another point of contention um, from this. So this uses a master cylinder from American Powertrain, which it was one of their vendors, um, which is a small company out of Iowa. Um, the name escapes Mullwood, USA. So... Um, for whatever reason, the, the master cylinder, the actual full piece, the, the plunger, um, it, fully, it fully came back out. It, it, was, it was stuck. I was pulling on the clutch pedal, pull it forward, and it popped out immediately wasting that master cylinder. Super frustrating. Um, at this point, I was already into this for like 2800 bucks on an emergency build, uh, emergency repair to get this done. And... I had a truck that was not running, um, could, could not drive it really. I mean, I had to start it in gear um, to get it going down the road at all to kind of get it back to my hotel. I ended up having it towed because I wasn't able to get it close enough. Um, ended up swapping out, worked with Mallwood. They got me one overnight, um, worked directly with them, replaced this, and it's just been okay. It's been like a double pumper to get it into first gear. Um, still have not, um, I'll probably, find some videos from Hot Rod Power Tour 2023. Um, I at no point was able to put the truck in reverse. So I either had to start the truck in reverse or I had no reverse. So that obviously is super frustrating, um, especially when you're trying to park. And as you can kind of see, this isn't a short bed, so it's a, it's a full long bed. So this thing's gotta be every bit of 18 feet long. Um, it's very difficult to, to maneuver that all the way through. So um, I really want to address that. I'm probably not going to address that tonight. It's, uh, it's a little late, but I need to get some stuff done. Um, uh, running into an issue, went and uh, drove this up north this past weekend. Um, I try to drive this truck a lot. It, right now it's August. So in the state of Michigan, if you run like an authentic plate like I do on this, you can drive it all the time in the, state of, or in the month of August in the state of Michigan. No, hold bar, no holds bar, it's, it's kind of sweet. So I really want to embrace that and drive the truck a lot this month just because I really love this thing. Um, it's, it's a blast to drive around. Um, I've got it absolute, I've, I've got it 99% dialed beyond some just stupid stuff with the clutch. Um, I got to replace a seal, I got to replace the transmission seal, um, the output shaft seal. Um, we noticed a little bit of a leak, so talk with the American Powertrain guys, they said, hey, run this part number. Um, went up to Napa, got the part number, and ever since then, I've been continuing to get leaks on the floor. Um, happened to be that the Tremec guys were at Hot Rod Power Tour, so I talked to them, and, they, and I gave them the part number and said, hey, this is the number that I was told to run. And he said, no, unfortunately, you have to go with a Tremec TCSJ1277. That was the exact one that they said to run, no matter what. So I've got to pop that other one out now, put this new one in. Hopefully I'll stop getting any leaks out of that transmission now. Top it off with uh, 
Mobile One synthetic ATF, uh, that's what I've been running. It's been giving me really good shift quality. Um, so that'll be pretty sweet, oh, kind of right here. Um, I do need to recharge the AC um, in this, and it really, it's low. Um, the compressor's kicking on, so it's not a big deal. And then for the clutch, I've, I've kind of assembled a couple of pieces um, that, that are gonna hopefully give me, correct my issue. So this is a two-way hydraulic valve um, that I'm going to install. And what this is gonna allow me to do is this is gonna allow me to close the system off. So, so in theory, for example, what I'm gonna do is right now I'm running a bleeder. It's, uh, it's a huge pain to get this thing bled. So this, this would be the closed position. Um, and then I'd be able to uh, rotate this again to the open position like this which would allow pass through. This thing's rated for 500 bar. It was like 7,200 PSI. So I'm really not concerned about that pretty much at all. Um, on one end of it, I'm going to have this thread into um, some dash 3AN. That's what all this stuff runs. Um, so I'm gonna run it from the, uh, this should be quarter. Yeah, quarter MPT to dash uh, 3AN um, stuff. And then on the other end, I'm going to run a quarter MPT to a 3 8 barb, uh, or I'm sorry, quarter barb. So what this is gonna allow me to do, when it's open, it'll be in the bleeding procedure. I'll be able to just throw this on, use some clear, uh, clear vinyl uh, line like this. Um, virtually zero way to get any air in the system if I do it that way. Um, what I'm running into right now, and I've already tried uh, with this Russell fitting, which is pretty cool. Cool, they call it a speed bleeder. Um, and I've been running a line all the way down from the bleed line. For whatever reason, there's, there's air contaminating the system. I have no idea where it is contaminating from, but it's contaminating somewhere in the system right now. Um, I'm also just not able to get all of the air out of the system. So uh, the sneaking suspicion, I, I've got a couple of different things and I'm really hoping it's not the bearing that, that would require me to pull the entire transmission out for like the 15th time this year um, already. As you can tell, I'm, I'm a little frustrated about that. But I, I have a feeling I have too much line right now and the bore on the master cylinder is pretty much right rated for the line that they provide you with. Um, so in theory, adding that valve will allow me to close off the system. Um, and then from there, I'll be able to actually bleed the system properly, close it, get good pedal, get good reverse, get good reliability back in the clutch. Um, and that should be hopefully fix it. Um, from there, I was having a little bit of an issue with the fitting on the back of the master cylinder. Thankfully, uh, Malwood did send me another one. Um, I had to reuse the one where I was at because I couldn't remove it. It's, it's seized on there for right now, but that's not a big deal. That can be removed, thankfully. Um, so that's my second area uh, to try to try to conquer. Um, the third area, I have a sneaking suspicion that um, I have some air still stuck in the master cylinder itself. So I've got a couple of ideas, probably unbolt that directly from the pedal assembly, bleed it out, hopefully that gets it. And worst case, if none of that gets it, I do have another bearing from uh, American Powertrain. I can pull the trans, put the whole thing back together, and hopefully that will fix it. Um, if that's the case, I'll be severely disappointed um, that this will be now the third bearing that I've had an issue with on this truck um, because I either couldn't get it to bleed or there was an issue um, directly with the system itself. So, but I, I've looked online and, and generally it's not American Powertrain's fault for the bearing. Um, that happens to be just it, they're just a pain to bleed. If you, if you kind of see, it's got two ports, top ports of the bleed port, bottom ports of the feed line. And essentially you have to ramrod a whole bunch of fluid in there really quickly to push all the air out. And there is just not a good way to do it. You can, you can force pressure through the cylinder, the top, of the, uh, the top of the reservoir. But even then, if you don't do it right, brake fluid goes everywhere. And it just, it's just a huge mess. Um, it's, it's really unfortunate. I've had zero luck with vacuum bleeding, trying to pull it through the bleeder either, um, or gravity bleeding, it's, it's just, it's been a huge pain. So I'd really like to get this thing good to go so that it's reliable again, so I can really just, just drive the crap out of it. I have almost 10,000 miles in the swap since I started it. Um, and I'd really like to, I'd really like to 
keep putting the miles on. I, I really like this truck and what it is right now. It's kind of, it's kind of something I take a lot of pride in. So ideally, I'd like to really get that fixed. Uh, but for tonight, um, while I was up north, I ended up having one of my exhaust hangers uh, broke a weld and it was hanging down. So um, I'd like to get pull that off. Thankfully, my exhaust comes off extremely easily. So I should be able to pull that off, re-tack weld it um, where the brake was, get that reinstalled. That'll be done while I'm already in there with the exhaust off. I'll change out the seal and then fill it back up with fluid. And ideally, that should be it. So I'm going to get cracking on that and uh, cycle back when we've got something cool. So comparing the two, um, this is like a Napa 16741, I think is what it was. Um, I don't know the exact application, but looking at the two, okay, um, we're able to see a couple of different things. Okay, so here's, here's where it ends up being a little bit different. It's just a touch smaller, and I mean just. A touch and you can kind of see it from that angle um, overall the exterior angle is super super similar uh, maybe you know maybe just a just a bit uh, almost smaller to be honest with you but but this one being a rubber eye seal I'm way less concerned about it it has grease on the inside so really uh, yeah out with this one back in with this one and uh, hopefully we will no longer have any leaks so forever, for whoever needs to know this, okay, when you're looking at the back of a T56, okay, your drain is right here. I'm gonna see if I can snaggle the camera back there. Sorry, got a lot of stuff on there. Okay, here, right here is the drain. Okay, come in. I'm so sorry, I know it's, I know it's quite bad. And on the other side is the fill plug. Okay, they're both just the standard 3 8 um, socket head to fill. Um, this one does say use DEX 3. I did confirm that uh, using the Mobile One synthetic ATF is totally fine in this application. So that's what I am going to do. Well, and that does it. Exhaust is back on. Um, everything is pretty much done. I refilled the trans. Uh, new seal is in. Uh, exhaust hangers, the the little you know ones that I put together just to make sure that everything was kosher for the ride home are completely done. So um, hopefully you guys got to uh, enjoy a little bit of the uh, 84 GMC long bed T56 uh, LS. So. Um, if you guys like it, go ahead and subscribe and, uh, you will definitely be seeing more of this. Thanks for much. Thanks so much for joining along. See you later.